Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for our webinar today. My name is Kelly. I'm here with Esri and I'll be helping to facilitate our events. Uh, before we get started officially, I just want to go over some housekeeping items with you all. Uh, we will be recording this entire event and providing you a link to that recording uh, within the next couple of days so you can share with your colleagues as needed. Um, we had planned this session to be interactive, so we'll have a dedicated open uh, question and answer session. Um, and if you have any questions, please feel free to put those in the chat. You can find the chat at the bottom of your Zoom window. Uh, if you could please put hashtag QA before any questions that you have, that will help our moderators uh, easily distinguish your questions. Uh, there will also be some poll questions throughout the presentation today, so we'll give you an opportunity to interactively respond to the questions that we have, and we'll be sharing out uh, the collective results at the end of those. So we will be asking everyone to keep their cameras off and uh, your microphones on mute, please, so that we can avoid any distractions to our speakers. Uh, we will also be asking you to join us in a hands-on session later on this morning, uh, but for now it looks like we're ready to get started, so please get comfortable, uh, keep your microphones on mute again and your cameras off, and we'll get ready to go. And Linda, I will pass that over to you. Thanks so much, Kelly, and, and welcome everyone. We're really glad that you're here today. Um, this session is being hosted uh, and sponsored today by Carigio. If you're not familiar with Carigio, it is the Caribbean Geospatial Development Initiative. And it's an initiative that was begun by the Americas uh, Committee of the UNGGIM. For those of you that are familiar with UNGGIM, um, really good group focused on helping to geo empower the Caribbean. And we've got a great uh, group of speakers with us here today. So what I'd like to do first is kick us off with a round of introductions. And I might ask each of our speakers to introduce themselves. And I'm gonna start with Simone, with Simone Lloyd. Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're joining us from. My name is Simone Lloyd. I'm the Senior GIS Manager and Trainer for Jamaica's National Spatial Data Management Branch under Land Information Council of Jamaica. I am also Jamaica's focal point to UNGGIM and UNGGIM Americas. Thank you. And also serving on the Carriage Steering Committee. Yeah, thanks, Simone. You can tell she's a, she's a busy lady. Um, uh, great to have you here. And next, I'd like to introduce uh, Roshan Clark. Roshan, please. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for the um, opportunity to be here. My name is Roshan Clark. I'm the Deputy CEO of Spatial Innovision. Uh, we are the distributors for ESRI for the English-speaking Caribbean. Um, we cover countries from Bahamas in the north of the Caribbean all the way to Guyana. Uh, with two offices, one in Jamaica and one in Trinidad. And uh, yeah, I wear the hat to manage the operations of the of the organization and to promote um, GIS and ESRI across the region. So it's a pleasure to be here and looking forward to the, to the webinar and thanks for the opportunity. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for being here again, Rashawn. Uh, next, I'm going to invite uh, Sean McGinnis, please, Sean. Hope everybody's having a good day. My name is Sean McGinnis. I am the GeoPortal Program Manager here at Esri. So helping to coordinate and uh, kick off and maintain the GeoPortals that we have uh, around the globe, including here in the Caribbean. So thank you to everybody for taking time today and, uh, and joining us. Thank you. Great, Th thanks so much, Sean. And last but not at all least, uh, Taiwo Ogunwumi uh, is joining us. Taiwo, please. Thank you, Linda. I thank you for the pleasure to be here today. My name is Taiwo, and I'm a GIS and information specialist working with the UN in Nigeria, supporting their programs to the displaced people at Northeastern Nigeria. Thank you very much. Great, thank you. Um, so we do have a lot to cover today, um, starting with why this is so important for the community. So Simone will share some thoughts on that. Uh, following that, Roshan uh, will provide us with our first overview of the Caribbean Geo Portal. Then we're gonna go into a bit of an interactive discussion. We, we promised this was uh, not gonna uh, just be us always talking. Uh, and so we're gonna answer some important questions, but we're gonna give you a lot of time to ask us questions as well. So uh, we'll talk a little bit first about how you get started and, and how you get access and what you can do. 
and uh, then we'll, we'll dive in on questions. As Kelly mentioned, we'll, we'll also do a couple of short polls, um, but then we're gonna get hands-on and uh, we're looking forward to all of you joining us and setting up an account and coming in and joining into the community. Um, we actually have a crowdsource app that we're gonna launch today with your help and get people to come in and start using the portal. Uh, then we're gonna have a case study with Tai Wo sharing his experience from using the African Geo Portal. And finally, when we uh, close up this afternoon, uh, a few more moments for some questions, and then we'll leave you with some resources. So with that, I don't wanna hold us back. I wanna get us moving right away and invite uh, Ms. Simone Lloyd to talk to us about why this is so important to the community. Uh, Simone, over to you. Thank you so much, Linda. Thanks again for joining us, everyone. So why is this important? Why is it that we are having this webinar? What do we want to achieve at the end of the day? So the Caribbean region is a very diverse region. It's a part of the Americas region for UNGGIM. And with this region, there is quite a mix of countries, small island developing states, and also mainland, mainland states, which have quite a bit of diversity in terms of historical background or geographical setting in terms of where we're located different from or difference in landscape or geological setting with respect to where we are in terms of the Caribbean tectonic plate. In addition to so many other factors that really influence and drive or similarity. We're interconnected and diverse region. And with that, we have different issues which are driven by our diversity with respect to all of these factors in terms of our geographical, geological, um, socioeconomic background. And so with that, we want to ensure that as Caribbean states, we are empowered. Carigio looks at geo empowering the region and you're empowering the region through the provision of geospatial information and services that can drive and really power how it is that we examine how our region is structured, how we examine the issues that impact our region, how we examine solutions, viable solutions that we can use to be able to move to the next stage in terms of advancing ourselves with respect to sustainable development. So given the context or socioeconomic background or environmental or hydrometeorological and geomorphological and health hazards that impact us as a region, it's important to be able to have access to geospatial information to drive how it is that we examine this and to move forward. So with that came the vision of the GeoPortal and the GeoPortal as a common platform that will facilitate an open sharing in terms of an open platform to facilitate open access to geospatial data that will really enable us as a region to look at our issues collaboratively. And with this, being able to provide analytical tools that are also freely available on this freely provided um, platform that has been provided by Esri through the Carriage Steering Committee. And with that, facilitating a collaborative effort through an open mapping community among us so that we're able to provide access to geospatial data that may be important to all of us because we're really interconnected. We share various industries within the region and prime being tourism, we're impacted by various hazards. And so with that, we really need to be able to share and access data that can really support our efforts throughout the region. So this initiative facilitates that through this platform. So apart from the fact that it is here to facilitate an open community, we look at the fact that as governments, the decisions that we need to make to drive our decision making really needs to be empowered by having access to really reliable, current, accurate geospatial information. But apart from that, technology and tools that will help us to be able to analyze and make those better decisions. So with that, We want to ensure that there is access to this and that with that there is more mentoring and collaboration and human capacity building and development throughout the region which can be facilitated via the portal because there are training options that the training portal does facilitate via esri in addition to the fact that we're having these webinar series to ensure that you are aware of what is being provided what is available 
And so that we can utilize what is available, we can share in the resource and really build it out further so that we can all benefit much more as a region, all right? So that is why it is that we're here. So with that, this is the first in a series of three webinars of which we are planning. And this one allows us as our first introduction as to what the portal is all about and really how can we use it? So we'll be learning how to use the portal today. By the second webinar in June, we'll be looking at really how to leverage the portal and all the various resources contained to really plan for and be able to respond effectively whenever it is a case about we're impacted by various disasters. And we're now in April, just around the corner is June, when the Atlantic hurricane season starts. And we're all well aware how it is that this region is significantly impacted by various tropical storms and hurricanes, which cause significant damage throughout the Caribbean region and also countries within the Americas. So looking at that in terms of how it is that the portal can really help us to respond, prepare and respond to disasters. Then comes our third webinar of which we'll be looking at the back end in terms of the data producers, what goes into really preparing and ensuring that whatever data it is that is provided for the platform, that this data is really reliable, it is built on standards, it, can, it is interoperable, it can be utilized by all the various um, community members that find use for it. Yes, so with that, we'll be having our third webinar that looks at metadata maintenance and best practices with regards to sharing of data via the geo portal. And so we welcome you. We're thankful that you're able to join us today. And we hope that you'll be able to benefit significantly from all that will be shared because really this initiative is very core where the CARI Geo Steering Committee is concerned to really drive and enable us to be a more geo-enabled and geo-empowered region where we're able to make better decisions through the use of geospatial information and services and platforms such as this one. So we really want to be able to get as much utility out of this platform for the benefit of all countries within the Caribbean region. Thank you. Over to you, Linda. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Simone, uh, for the, the great introduction. And uh, I'm gonna move us along quickly and uh, invite uh, our colleague, Roshan, uh, to come up and to share his screen. Um, he's going to begin to walk us through uh, and give us an overview of what the Caribbean Geo Portal really is all about. Roshan? Uh, hi. Hi, thanks, Linda. Um, okay, I'll just share my screen and um, walk us through what is the Caribbean Geo Portal. All right, thanks so much, um, everyone, for joining. Um, so I'm going to take a few minutes and walk us through what the Caribbean Geo Portal is. Um, Simone gave a very good um, introduction on, on its functionalities and its purpose and the vision. And I'm going to just get a little more granular on uh, along that same line. OK, now. Um, the main purpose of it, or how we like to describe it, is it's an open mapping community for the Caribbean. And the open is very important because we want to um, reduce, if not um, fully take away, all restrictions that allow, that will allow for all um, persons to participate and to use and to um, leverage this platform. There's data on it, um, data from Esri, from our partners, from the governments. Um, and of course, very importantly, there are authoritative producers um, such as NOAA and NASA that has um, real good data on it. Okay. Um, in addition, there's analytical tools for spatial data. So it has more functionality than just being a portal to host data, but you can really leverage the information there and you can really build maps um, on the data that's there. Um, there's also access to hands-on software training. And this is very important because it, we want it to be attractive, not only to existing GIS professionals, but also to newcomers or people who are at a certain level and they want to increase their, prof their proficiency. Um, so there's training there as well. Um, and of course you can publish your own data online. So it's very important that we, we not only leverage what's there, but you can push things out to your stakeholders. Um, there's field data collection tools there as well. And of course, there are configurable web applications. So we like to 
um, describe this portal as a portal built for the community by the community um, and you know it is to assist the community now let's go a little deeper into the tools and the content found on the caribbean geo portal it provides full access to artgis online okay so it providing it's providing access to tools for mapping analytics sharing and support uh, if, you, if if i can draw your attention to the right of the screen you will see a few examples of the different types of data that are there and we're talking about admin boundaries we're talking about land cover um, we're talking about imagery which is very important um, real-time traffic you know um, and there are others as you would see bathymetry oceans demographics wind and weather conditions but more importantly as you would see there's open data sources you know um, there's community data from ngos and there's of, of course commercial data so it, it the idea is that um, there's a rich collection of data and we want to enrich it more and more with more users and more contributors um, so that it can serve the region in, in its full capacity. Uh, if we talk about the tools that you can, or the functionalities that are there, you can create web maps, you can apply spatial analytics to aggregate and join and summarize stuff. Of course, you can geocode stuff and you can analyze patterns and calculate density. You can manage data, you can dissolve, extract, merge, and overlay. And you can very much, for me, this is very important that you can do work in the field. So it is something that is not only for use in your office, in the organization, or for some of us who are working from home, it's not only for your um, work as it relates to the organization in in a, in a quote-unquote office setting, but also for your team that um, would go out and do field work. So, having covered uh, what it is about in an in a overview, let's more look at now the different types of um, players that we expect, our, our accounts, or people that would apply to, not apply, sorry, people that would um, register to use this. Um, we, have, we have broken down into four, but of course, you know, even if you don't fall into these four categories, you're still more than welcome to uh, create an account and leverage the the platform okay but first we talk about students so we want it to be very attractive and and um, opportunistic for students to create and share personal projects to contribute work to their community to learn new gis concepts uh, to use open data science libraries and to you know have long-lived coursework of course we can't talk about GIS, GIS and not speak to our developers who are really the backbone of the innovation that continues to happen in GIS. So there is uh, access, there is functionalities for, uh, I should say there are functionalities for developers to create and share personal projects, to learn new GIS concepts and tools, to work with APIs and SDKs, and of course to use data through REST services and prototype applications. So those are two. And then we have to talk about the leaders. We have to talk about the decision makers and, and those who really um, drive organizations and drive decisions. So they're able to showcase the agency works, the agencies that they work at. They're able to share data to enabled community as well as share data to enable communities. Um, you can demonstrate emergency preparedness and response, which I think is really, really critical to our region as we as we face not only annual disasters like hurricane, but you know, um, unplanned disasters such as what's happening to my brothers and sisters in St. Vincent now with the volcano eruptions. So, so it is important to have this platform to leverage in these kind of disasters to get quick response and quick access to data. Um, of course, we can use it to build community network and support current events such as what I just described as a volcano. Um, now, the last user type, if you will, that we have um, put here is the business partner. Um, it allows you to provide and promote data products from one business partner to the wider community, uh, build relationships with the community, support organization goals for the public good, and of course, develop new solutions, innovate and add on and create new solutions. 
Okay. Now let's take a look at various templates that are available on the platform. We have uh, disaster response, we have COVID-19, we have geospatial tools, um, and many more actually. So you, you, can, uh, you can, well, before the end of this presentation, you would be walking through the actual portal and seeing for yourself some of these uh, templates, but there's a lot for you to explore. Information on disasters also sits on the geoportal. As we mentioned, COVID-19 just now, so there are dashboards there. There's information coming in on earthquakes and hurricanes, earth observations. And uh, of course, as we mentioned, there is NASA data there. So we would invite you to join our next webinar in June to see so much more that is available even around the volcano um, in St. Vincent on our geoportal. Now, We've talked about the, you know, the functionalities and the, the tools and the applications and the data, but we also have to speak about the learning aspect of the portal. There, it, it provides access to learning, using learning lessons, users have access to a library of free lessons in multiple languages. And this is important because two things that are important here is that it's free lessons. Um, this is one of the key factors of this geo portal that, you know, there is no time that we're going to say you have to pay to access this portal. You know, it is free for the community, by the community. And similarly, the learning tools that are accessible there are at no cost and also in multiple languages as we have a diverse um, region. I also just want to take this moment to acknowledge some of my fellow distributors on the call from other territories within the region, speaking different languages, but we're all one Ezri team. Um, so in a nutshell, what is the Geo Portal's vision and objectives? The vision is to provide a one-stop shop portal for geographic content and comprehensive web GIS tools, free for single users residing in, supporting efforts, or working in the region. And we hope that this will lead to uh, a removal of the barriers to entry to geospatial technology data and learning for users working in the region. It should also enable a sustainable portal of portals for ex existing and new geospatial data focus in the region and provide a portal built for the community by the community. So I'd just like to close with a quote from, you know, our star of Esri, you know, uh, founder, um, great um, motivator for myself personally, as well as for GIS in the region, Jack Dangerman. Um, and this is, a, this is a personal commitment on his part to support innovation in the region, helping users to discover, explore, and understand the vast information available to them through the power of maps. So um, I encourage you to sit back with us and to dive into the portal, to uh, spread the word after this, to your GIS network of professionals and even non-GIS professionals. And, and I hope that you leave this with uh, a better understanding and more familiarity of how to navigate the geo portal. Having said that, I'll pass back to you, Linda. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Rashawn, for that and a, and a great overview to get us uh, started here this morning. Uh, we'll pause for just a minute and uh, invite people again and remind you to please use the chat uh, at any point during uh, this morning's presentation to ask us questions. Uh, we're happy to take a couple of uh, short questions uh, now as we're moving along. Um, but also I want to ask Kelly, we've got a couple of questions for you as we go through this morning and we've got a first poll question for you, Kelly. Do you want to kick us off in that poll question? Yeah, thanks, Linda. So we have a poll question for everyone. I'm going to go ahead and launch that. So you should be seeing now on your screen a question one, and that is, do you envision using the Caribbean Geo Portal in the next three months, six months, one year, you're already using it, or you're not sure yet? So we'll just leave this open for maybe about 20, 30 seconds for everyone to get their answers in. And you should be able to just, again, click right on that answer we will be sharing the results at the end. Your individual responses will be anonymous, but we'll be sharing the collective uh, results with the percentages. So I, I do see some answers coming in. So thank you for that. We appreciate your participation in this. And again, I'll leave it open for maybe about 10 more seconds to make sure you get that vote in. Oh, sure, voting's on, voting's on. 
All right, and it looks like actually a good majority has already put their answers in. So I'm gonna go ahead and end this and I'm gonna share the results here. So you should be seeing the results on your screen and it looks like a majority of you, 49% uh, plan on using it within the next three months. Um, the next 24% of you aren't quite sure yet. And then the rest of you are kind of somewhere in between. Yeah, great. Well, for those of you um, that are already using it, um, like I am, I hope you're getting a lot out of it and uh, we're looking forward to having others uh, join us. Um, with that, I'm gonna move us along. We're gonna begin now with a facilitated um, discussion and some demonstrations. So I'm gonna invite Rashawn back up, uh, but I'm also going to invite Sean McGinnis to join us. Um, Sean is uh, going to try and answer live uh, some of the questions that Rashawn is asking him and uh, show us uh, live those answers. So instead of just giving us an answer, he's going to show us how things are done in the portal. So with that, uh, Rashawn, Sean, throw it over to you. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Linda. How are you, Sean? How are you doing? I'm doing well, Rashawn. How are you today? I'm all right. I'm all right so far. Thank you. All right. So we're going to have a conversation and walk through some of the functionalities of the portal. Um, I, I would start with um, I would start with the first question, which is um, we have heard a lot already, right? So, can you just like in a in a general way uh, show us around the portal? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, as has been said a couple times now, geo portals are open mapping communities focused on the sharing of regionally relevant data. And when we think about geo portals, there's there's five main areas. The first is the landing page here where we have some of the, uh, the context and some of the most important resources or initiatives that we're seeing within, within the region or activity that's going on within the geo portal. We have direct links over to focused pages like this one here towards the Caribbean COVID-19 response. Uh, a little, some educational information on why geography matters, you know, what's mm -hmm. important, how is it being used to support organizations within this region. Mm -hmm. Again, more context around specific uh, initiatives, as well as ways to, to jump right in and either log in or sign in. So there's a, there's a lot of opportunities to discover data down on the bottom or just learn more about what's going on within the region. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so basically you mentioned, you just mentioned data. Could you uh, dive a little more into that for us? Yeah, so the data page is really becomes the access into the Caribbean Living Atlas. So this is provide right now, as it stands right now, we have 78 authoritative layers that are coming from a wide variety of different providers, whether it be people at NASA, people over, mm -hmm. at, the, over at NOAA, uh, mm -hmm. Esri's Living Atlas, as well as nice. some of the individual providers and people who are contributing within the organization right now. So this okay. is one way that you can get access to it. But as we said on the previous page, there's these focused initiative pages as well. Mm -hmm. so okay. R Rashawn, you had mentioned the importance of access to this information and uh, the disasters as, as they ramp up, especially in the region. Right. This, this page focuses on a number of data sets and services that are provided by the NASA Earth Service Disasters Program. Okay. So it provides a map that shows uh, the current state of what's going on in disaster response within the Caribbean region with the mask. So it's just showing the areas focused there. Mm -hmm. But it also has direct links over to available data sets to support the uh, different types of responses. So okay. in hurricane scenarios, you know, there's concern around the amount of precipitation that's come down but also how moist is the soil? Is it going to be mm -hmm. able to handle all of that uh, moisture and the rain that's coming down? So these two layers can be used in conjunction with one another to get an understanding of you know, what some of the impacts might be and where. Okay. Yeah, so that's awesome. Just, 
there's a wealth of, of info in here as well as access to near time data. So these are, these are pieces of information that are coming from an array of different sensors that can come in and be used in your analysis or helping to provide additional understanding with a locational context. Okay. No, this is this is really cool. Um, and and this is available right now. There, there's no. Do you have to register to access this, or you, you can access it even if you're not signed in? To to see all of this data, uh, you don't have to be signed in. Okay, great. Right now, great. I'm not I'm not logged in, so um, I'm able to see all of this data, and I can click through and and start to see even more information about those data sets. Awesome. Um, all of these, all of these authoritative sites or sources, excuse me, have description information and metadata mm -hmm. associated with it. So, you know, you want to make sure that this is going to be fit for the use that you're you're going to use it for. Well, you can mm -hmm. go in and browse and learn more about each of these individual data sets to make sure awesome. you're using the right stuff. Awesome. All right, that sounds cool. So we, we, we've, we've, we've dived um, very far into data. Um, how about the tools and the functionalities there? Yeah, so there are a lot of tools that fall within um, the, the Caribbean Geo Portal. Um, there is a tools page that's available right off the toolbar on the top, as well as some descriptive information on it. So the ability, there's detail around creating web maps. So once you create a user within the, the Caribbean Geo Portal, mm -hmm. you can create maps leveraging this authoritative information, data that's shared by other members in the community, or you can bring mm -hmm. your own. Okay. Um, so you're not just locked into what you have here. You can bring in data from a variety of different sources um, that, are, that are available. Okay. Been. And then comes to the tools. Right now, there are over 30 different tools that are available inside the geo portal. Wow. So we've got geo processing tools that do summaries and aggregations, join features, all within this web browser, all within the, the geo portal itself. So it doesn't require external software to be uh, on your machine to, to do this type of analysis. Oh, that's an important point. Yeah, yeah. So you don't you don't need to install anything. You can use it on a variety of different devices, um, in whatever situation that you're involved in. Um, mm -hmm. You can get access to this if you've got a mobile device with connectivity. If you're out in the field, right? Some of these, um, uh, you'll. It doesn't just require you to be here in the browser. You also get access to field uh, capabilities and data okay. creation and visualization and some some analysis there as well. Yeah, could you just uh, slowly scroll down the different um, tools? So you summarize, you can aggregate points, you can join features, you can summarize nearby, summarize within, summarize center and dispersion, um, data en enrichment, so you enrich yeah. layers, find so locations. Well, uh, one of the, the quick ways that we might be able to, to see is let's go over to the COVID page mm -hmm. here and we can start to see some of that analysis coming right as we land on the page, right? All so right. as soon as we get here, we've already got some of the summary information showing up already. Mm -hmm. The number of confirmed cases, that's leveraging the GIS data coming from one of our sources and summarizing mm -hmm. to show that over 650,000 confirmed cases within the Caribbean. Okay. So we can, we can provide uh, statistics and analysis even outside of the map. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. But as I'm willing to bet most of the folks on the call are also kind of map people. <laughs> yeah, I would think so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Rashawn, you said you were Jamaica. Whereabouts yeah. in Jamaica? Uh the Blue Mountains, um, Kingston. You could use Kingston as a reference. Okay. So uh -huh. one of the first things that's readily available inside the app is geocoding and place location. Uh -huh. So by putting that information in there, I'm able to find where Roshan generally is. We keep right. him, we keep his real location uh secure for 
obvious reason. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Um, but we also can start to see some of the summary information that's there. So right. within Jamaica, we're starting to see a summarized and aggregation of confirmed COVID cases within, within Jamaica. One of the other things you, you brought up before was also what's going down, what's going on down in uh, 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 for St. Vincent, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Yeah, St. Vincent uh, mm-hmm. and the Grenadines. Yeah. So another, so here we're able to quickly find where that is. But, you know, right now we're just seeing the the information, the summary information that's there. People right, might for COVID. Pull, pull other data into it. So if I sign in, we start to get access to more of those capabilities and that um, uh, the analysis part of it. So apologize while I log in. Yeah, no, that's fine. That's fine. So now. We are back and let's go down to and the Grenadines here. And now let's add some information that might be more applicable with what's what's been going on recently. Mm-hmm. So one of the, the data sets that uh, I have been looking at recently was around the volcanoes and volcanic activity. So we're able to start to see a map that's coming from one of the authoritative sources on the world volcano. So now I can bring that information into my into my map. But then there's also a wide variety of data sets from the different organizations that are contributing within the geo portal. So okay. if I go and search for layers and now we'll go in and we'll take a look for fossil free air and look for that. Now we start to see some really recent information that is um, associated with that event. Right. So we've got this false color composite where we can actually start to see aspects of the volcano. Right. And then with analysis, I ran this one analysis uh, before, just for time purposes. I'm gonna I'm gonna add it in. Mm-hmm. Um, but one of the data sets that was there is plume density. So one of the concerns people have had is how dense is the plume? Is it safe for me to come back? All right. So by using some of the data that was available from ArcGIS Online, I used the plume height data that was Mm -hmm. available from NASA. I was able to calculate the density of the plume and see where it was impacting downstream. So we can see in Barbados, they were getting getting, um, hit with some of that plume. So these are just a real quick touch onto some of the analytical tools that are there. Oh, this is awesome. I mean, it's an awesome in sense of um, it's a tragic situation, but it, this is how quickly we can respond and, and we can apply the technology to better understand and, and respond to situations like this. Hey, Michelle um, th- and Sean, we've got a question from the audience uh, from Elizabeth Thorne um, asking about data enrichment. Can you talk about what that is and, and uh, what it's not? She's asking if that's where users add data into the portal. Uh, I missed that last part. I'm sorry, Linda. It was a little muffled sorry. there. Yeah. Uh, the question is, what is data enrichment? Is that where users add data to the portal? That's a great question. That's a great question. Um, Data enrichment is uh, more around creating new features with underlying uh, 
business or demographic or economic landscape attributes merged with your, your data. So you don't have to do data enrichment in order to add your data to the portal. You can just bring your own data in to it and then perform data enrichment on top of that. Okay. Uh, that's interesting. I hope that answers um, Elizabeth's question. Um, I'll bring some more clarity. So it's basically taking the data and adding on um, some other stuff to make it a more rich data for your purpose. Yeah, yeah. And what I'll do is I, uh, in the chat window here, let me, uh, I'll paste a, um, a link into the, oops, that went to somebody who sent a direct. Let me put this out to everybody here and there, so there's a, a link to uh, additional detail on uh, data enrichment and uh, how it can be used to, to enhance your data. All right. Um, I mean, this is, this is powerful. Showing us those, those tools, it's really powerful. Um, uh, do you have more to show or can we go into like the developers now? I, I'm, I'm curious to see how this can be used by developers. Yeah, uh, yeah, let's jump into the developer side. So I, I often joke that uh, I'm a, a recovering JavaScript and Python developer. Um, <laughs> I still like to, to go in and, uh, and play around with it. So we can right. continue with this, this same scenario here. So, you know, I created this data set it lives inside the geo portal and I have it shared to people. But in the situation with the developer, they're often building applications that require a uh, certain business logic or relation to other uh, data sets that might be within their business systems or, or important to them. So mm -hmm. this is um, over on the developer's website and this is just a quick sandbox that's there. So we've heard some, some terms that have come around in our conversation around uh, REST endpoints and APIs. Well, all of the services that uh, we have posted within the geo portal have mm -hmm. that REST endpoint. So this is kind of getting a little, a little deep in the, the developer nerdiness, but this is what the, the REST endpoint looks like for a developer. So it talks about what the data set is, you know, some of the details about the data, et cetera. But why is that useful? Well, within this example, if I come in, and this is something else that's freely available to everybody. So you can come in and, and test and, and use these. So if I make two quick changes, the one mm -hmm. I'm going to point at that REST endpoint that we just showed, as well as updating the extent. Now, I apologize, this is not the best extent that I, I could have gotten, but it's close-ish. Um, so now, if I refresh this, by using that REST endpoint, now inside a JavaScript uh, viewer, I have that same data that we were just showing inside mm -hmm. the GeoPortal, now brought in to this map. Okay. So for developers, we have well-defined APIs and SDKs. We have REST endpoints that are uh, available uh, for people, whether you're developing spatial or non-geospatial applications. Yeah, this is powerful. Uh, this is powerful. Um, I mean, I'm not the developer, so it's a little... <laughs> um, beyond my scope, but the fun, the, the, what it does, I get it. You know, it, it allows it to integrate um, stuff from the portal with other stuff that you're doing. Um, yeah, yeah that's Sean powerful. And Rashawn, we have one more question from the audience, if this is a good time. Yeah, sure. sure. Okay, this question uh, comes from Danielle. When a layered map is created, can you embed it to disseminate on your own website? Yes, great question. So if we go back, or let me find, I've got so many tabs. Um, so if I were to come in and create a map in here and we can add that scene, let's 
add that same layer. We'll keep working with the same context here. Mm -hmm. And I save that as my, let's just call that a, oops. There we go. Oops, where did that go? So there are, there is the capability to uh, take the web map itself and open it up at, uh, and bring it in in an iframe that's there. So I'm trying to, uh, to grab that logic here uh, real quick, but it's um, eluding me in this, in this viewer right now. Let me, um, I will find that direct spot for you, but yes, it is, it is possible for you to embed these maps into uh, pages inside your existing websites. It can be a map, it can be an application, um, just using a standard HTML iframe. Okay. I think there's a follow-up question. Yeah, the, uh, could you embed these with React or a Flutter? application. Um, because this is standard HTML, um, you know, there's nothing that would uh, prevent you from doing that. My suggestion would be uh, specific to that is if you go to the Esri GitHub page, they have examples on how you can how you can do that. Um, and gives you kind of the, the walkthroughs and the go-bys for using the, the APIs in those different types of frameworks. This is really powerful. Um, all right, so we've, we've, we've spoken about developers, we've spoken about data, about tools. Um, how about the training side of the stuff? Could you walk us through what that's like on the platform? Yeah, yeah. So there's a whole section here on learning. So, you know, you had even kind of said, you know, this may be, this is a little bit over uh, your skill set on here. Well, one of the things mm -hmm. that we have available for, for all of our users is access to our training platforms. Mm -hmm. um, for new users and people coming in, my suggestion would be go to the learn link. So if you go to the learn page, and then click Learn ArcGIS. It takes you to a series of uh, curated learn lessons that are um, that are covering a wide range of, of things, whether it be capabilities, if you're looking for mapping or field operations, spatial analysis or data science, if you have specific products that you're interested in, or if you're just getting started. You can come up here and enter a simple search around get started. How do I do this? And there are a whole bunch of different applications that will get you started in using all of the, a bunch of the different tools that we have available here inside the, uh, the geo portal. Okay. Uh, Sean and Rashawn, I might ask another question. We had another question coming in, um, and that is, who pays for the credits that are used for the geoprocessing tool? Is that totally funded by Esri, or is it a joint effort? I don't know. Sean, can you take that one for us? Sure. So when you create a user, you get um, a geoportal user within, Arcge within the geoportal platform, and each user gets uh, 500 credits per year to use to support their geoprocessing, whether that's uh, uh, geocoding, if you're using some of the uh, premium data sets, uh, the notebooks that are there. So that is all, is all covered uh, within the geo portal itself. So there is no cost that's associated with the um, the credits that's there. Yeah, and, and I guess I, that, I, sorry, Sean. I just I was going to add to that because I don't want people to be thinking they have to count number of credits, right? If they if they run out, we'll add more, right? Yeah, that was that was exactly the point that I was I was going to um, hop to here. Is I check I get an alert every morning 
as to where people stand with their credits. And if people are getting low, uh, one of the things I do, if you start running low on credits, I'll send you an email. Because if you're using that many credits, I want to personally just see what are you doing? And just out of interest and see how we might be able to help. So, you know, credits, credits are covered within the geo portal and I keep a close eye on them. So um, I wouldn't, that's not a concern in moving forward with uh, joining the geo portal and part of the community. Great, and, and we've got one other question coming in from the chat from Ranford um, asking about the data sets. Um, he wants to know how the data sets on the platform are shared and does he need any agreement to use the data? Yeah, another great question. So the sharing of the data comes down to the decision of the data owner. So a user can share, can create the data. Um, the authoritative users um, determine that this is open data and it is available to everybody to use and uh, leverage. Um, so you don't need a, an agreement to use the data outside of the, the agreements when signing up for the user that's there. So you don't have to worry about getting an MOU or uh, uh, an MOA with anybody to access or utilize the information. With the goal of this being regionally relevant content you know, we are, we are working to get federated access to the authoritative data sets from local agencies, regional agencies, national agencies, et cetera, and working to provide easier access and a set of tools so everybody can participate in it. So we try to remove as many barriers as possible to get access to that data. Yeah, great. Thanks for answering that one. Yeah, this is awesome. Um, so, all right. So we've gone through a lot and I think our audience has a better understanding of what we can do. And from the questions, sounds like folks are excited to get going. So uh, how do we get started? Well, the best way to get started is to go in and create a new, create a new user and create an account for yourself. So okay. I've, I've already got mine here and we'll go through the process of creating a new user um, in a couple minutes to help people jumpstart and, and get going and using the geo portal. All right. Um, all right. So maybe I'll just put up a screen and uh, we can look at that as a reference to get yeah. some started. Yeah. Let me know if you see my screen. Yep, I've got it. Okay, great. So there seems to be um, three main um, channels. You know, if you're starting from scratch or if you already have an ArtGIS online account or if you have a university account, um, could you share a little bit on that? Sure, if you, if you need to, sign up from scratch. Um, there is a, a process that allows you to create a new account. Uh, and that account could be within the geo portal ecosystem. So it's a it's a user there. But there's also the opportunity to leverage your social logins as well. So if you have a Google account or a Facebook account, you can use the authentication there and create an account using your, your Google account and then create the account so that you can participate within that organization. Okay. All right. Um, Linda, are we good for time? Are we okay? Yeah, um, no, we're, we're doing really great on time. Uh, what I'd like to suggest is uh, maybe we move forward with some additional questions and I'll encourage the audience. We, we've had great participation so far, but keep, keep sending those questions. Um, and I think uh, maybe we can launch into some of the first ones that we have here already. Okay. All right. So we're doing a, a Q&A now. Yes. Okay, great. 
All right. So um, one of the questions I think folks may have is, uh, do I need to pay to use any of the tools provided in the Caribbean Geo Portal? Yeah, well, that, that answer is no. There's no cost to, to participate or use the Geo Portal. By creating that user, you get access to those 500 credits, all of the analytical tools, the learn lessons that are, that are available, the curated content, as well as the ability to bring your own data and, and use it with these other authoritative sources to get a, a better understanding or analyze that data to improve uh, the, the understanding in a geographic or a location-based context. Awesome. Um, so another question that may pop up is, my office doesn't use any Esri technology. Can I still participate in this mapping community? Yes, absolutely you can. Um, GeoPortal is an open mapping community. There is no requirement to being an Esri customer. We support open standards. The data is shared openly with REST endpoints. Um, you know, I'll be, I'll be honest as well. I run a Mac and I have QGIS on my machine and it enables mm -hmm. to access the data. So there is no requirement of being an existing Esri customer. Requirement is just going in and creating that geo portal account and um, participating within the community from there. Okay. I mean, that QGIS point is very important for our, our colleagues listening um, that may be wondering about being an exit customer. All right. Another question that may pop up is, do I have to have an ArtGIS online account to use the Geo Portal? So you may have folks who are Esri users, but not necessarily have an online account set up. Yeah. Um, the answer to that one is no. You can create that, that free account here when you join the community. So again, it doesn't have to, you're, there's, we're trying to remove that barrier of entry and the cost barrier that's often preventing people from participating. So you do not have to have that. You can leverage this free account to get access to all of the resources here on the Geo Portal. And, and I guess the power of this is, so if you're comparing this to other free platforms, our platform has um, a lot of analytical power um the spatial analysis that is on this is um is something that is highly valuable and it's available for free at this point yeah yeah i when i think about the geo portal i think of it as as a combination of three different things i think of it as a combination of those capabilities the analytical the the mapping the tools that are there Mm -hmm. the curated and authoritative data that's there. So working with these different agencies that are that are data providers and data stewards and working with mm -hmm. them to bring that data into the community um, that's regionally relevant and important. But then right. also, I think one of the, the other valuable points that often gets overlooked is the the training that's mm -hmm. that comes with it as well. So there are the opportunities to, to learn how to use the tools and understand what's going on. And even for some of the more complex things, you know, if you want to learn a new skill, you can come into this geo portal and, you know, get started with Python development or get started creating field maps to help empower your other, your other uh, community members for capturing info while they're doing work, um, while they're doing work out in, out uh, outside of the office. Right, right. All right, another question that pops up sometimes is, I already have access to ArtGIS online at work with an organizational account or at home with a personal account. How do I use the Caribbean Geo Portal? Yeah, if you've already got an ArcGIS account for your professional work or you've got a public account, you can share that data and the applications with the community. So opening up access so that it becomes discoverable within the broader ArcGIS online or uh, ecosystem so that it becomes discoverable, it's open, that's mm -hmm. there. But if you want to do some personal mapping that is focused within your community or the region, the Geo Portal is a place where your project um, can be, can be uh, built 
It can be, it can utilize the, the data storage some of the development resources that are there and become accessible to members of the community. Okay. Hey, All uh, right. Uh, uh, yeah, so the question for you, Rashawn and Sean, um, this one is coming from uh, Brian and it's a, a great question. If I develop and share data that I want to be included, what are the steps to do that? And is there a curation process? Yeah, that is a great question. Um, Rashawn, do you mind if I if I share my screen real quick? Sure, one, sure, sure. You should have access now. All right, thanks. Now it just comes the fun of where there we go. Too many windows open too. Um, desktop one, desktop two. Here we go. Sorry for the delay here. Again, too many windows. Oops, that's the wrong window there. So the, the answer while I'm hunting and pecking through all of the windows that I have open here, here we go. Um, as we talk about, you've got data and you wanna, you wanna make it available. So down off of the data page, there's a, a link, it's down at the bottom. So if we scroll, if, when you get onto the data page itself, the Caribbean Living Atlas, and if you scroll down here, there's an option to start sharing your data. So when you click through here, it brings you to the Living Atlas page. And what the Living Atlas page, it allows for uh, you to submit your data to be assessed as an authoritative source. Now, I'll, I'll be honest, my data is, my data and my maps do not have the quality right now to be submitted as authoritative information. But you can see, these are my items. These are things that I own and provides a score and a ranking as well as suggested improvements. How can I make it, how can I make it better in order for it to be shared within the GeoPortal community as an authoritative source? So that is one way that you can go and make that data available. Um, that's there. Another is as you create your data, um, you share it publicly within the geo portal community. And as people search for it, it becomes available. But my suggestion would be go through, a, go through the process of submitting it um, to be included with inside the living atlas. Um, because the same things that make it a quality, uh, item to be included there, make it valuable to the community that you're sharing it with. Yeah, that, that's great. Thank, thanks for um, sharing that, Sean, and showing it. I think the curation pop process is really powerful. And we've got another question from the group of Sean. I'm going to throw this one to you, if you can. Jason is asking, are we expecting teachers or school students to use the site? Yeah, definitely. We expect that. We're encouraging that. We, we welcome that. Um, the idea is that the portal should be leveraged by the entire um, Caribbean community. So if, um, if it is attractive and seems feasible to teachers to use it as a starting point to introduce their students to GIS, then certainly we welcome that. And um, Jason, personally, if you know of that, or know of any um, opportunity like that, um, I'll drop my email in the chat and you can definitely reach out to me to discuss further. But yeah, we welcome that for sure. Yeah, I think one of the other things I'd love to see is let's get some student competitions going, right? This, this portal is open and, and accessible to everyone. So uh, for those of you at the uh, university level out there, um, you know, br bring your game on. Let's let's do it. Yeah, I mean, also with, with, um, with, with, Simone on the line, we can definitely discuss, you know, we have an active GIS day. We can leverage it for GIS day activities um, where we have all the schools um, act, um, participate. And we could even push it further and have a, a inter-Caribbean GIS um, act, um, competition or activity. So, yeah, I welcome that as well.
Right. <laughs> great, great. All right. The comments on the student competition has stirred up some some chatter. I, I think that's a, a excitement in the group on that. So uh, let's get a story maps competition going. I agree, Corey. Let, let's do it. Yeah. Um, Roshan and, and Sean, I'll throw it back to you for a minute while I curate some more of the questions coming in. Well, I'd like to I'd like to grab one of the questions that I just saw um come through mm -hmm. um and it's around is there a geonet site for the caribbean geo portal where users can ask each other questions and share their knowledge a great question um and we're we're trying to promote ways or, or come up with ways to help promote the community and the exchange of information amongst one another at this point there's not a geonet community um, but if there's interest, we could get one started up and um, we can start to use that to promote the, the user to user interactions and opportunities to showcase the good work that you're doing. Um, right. that would be, if there's interest, we can put one together. Yeah, and it could also sit on the, as, a, as an additional tab on the portal. Yep, yep. So you wouldn't have to navigate elsewhere. You could get it right there. Right. Great question. Great ideas, guys. I, I'm really, I feel like the 85 participants is just one big town hall conversation happening amongst colleagues and some great ideas coming. So I appreciate it. Um, okay, so I'm going to shoot back to a few more questions, if I could. Yeah, yeah, please. All right, cool. All right, so... We've answered four. Let's look at another one. So I don't use Ezra technology today um, as a scenario. Um, someone doesn't use Ezra technology today, but use open source GIS. How can this help me? Sure. So this can help you by providing a destination to find the authoritative data that's there. What are the, the, the data sets of you, uh, within the region that are relevant given the specific themes or uh, areas that you're working in. And because they have uh, web APIs, um, also there's the opportunity if the, the data publisher allows it, you can download it in open file formats as well. There are ways of getting access to the data for some of the web work as GeoJSON, um, or you can download it as a shape file. Um, you know, as I, as I said, on my machine, I've got QGIS that's running, but I'm also a big user of Jupyter Notebooks where I can run those um, from a terminal on my machine. So there's a lot of ways that you can get access to the data, either through the web APIs or the open file formats. And you can use the tools that, that work for you, the ones that you know and uh, help you answer the questions that you have. Awesome. All right, another scenario. I use QGIS for my desktop GIS. How do I create and use content from the Caribbean GeoPortal? Yeah, um, well, that one goes right back to the, the previous. So with your GeoPortal account, you can, you can upload the shape files that you're working as a zip file. So you can create an item, upload that zip file, uh, with all of the, the shape components and the associated metadata. And you can publish those and get them available as, as web services. You can also use, you can upload GeoJSON um, into there, as I mentioned, and have those build the web services. Um, and then, you know, if you are the QGIS user, uh, you can add them into uh, your, your application using the, the ArcGIS feature server connection. And that allows you to uh, stream the features into that application. So there's a number of ways that even if you use QGIS, you can contribute to uh, this, this Caribbean GeoPortal community. Uh, awesome. All right, so can Caribbean software developers embed content into their applications? Yep, again, um, 
all of the services that are shared uh, through the GeoPortal uh, have REST endpoints. So they're RESTful web services. So um, if the user has made it available and if it's discoverable within the GeoPortal, it has been, um, it is open data, you can access that content and use it within your applications. Okay. Can I add my own data and mesh it with the GeoPortal content? Yep. Yep, whatever, whatever type of uh, GIS tool you're using, or if you've downloaded a shape file from another source, you can bring that shape file and use the, the mapping capabilities as well as the analysis tools um, with your shape file, as well as a host of other data sources or data sets that are, are readily available within the community. So yes, you can, you can bring your shape files you can bring your GeoJSON. You can bring your CSV files too. So you can bring you can bring a wide variety of content that you already have, and participate in this community. Okay. Um, how large a file can I upload? Yeah, two hundred gigs. That's the that's the maximum file size. Um, but that's pretty big. That's pretty big. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest, I did a, I did a almost seven gig file yesterday for work that we're doing with another one of the geo portals. And I was able to bring seven gigs up as a, it was a shape file um, or collect, I think it was a one. I'm having a tough time remembering all of the components in it, but you can put some very, very large files. And then by going into, uh, by logging in and going to the my content tab, you can then mm -hmm. upload that and then get the enhanced performance that comes from uh, accessing that data through a web service uh, delivery and consumption model. So you can have big data and you can also speed up the access to it through a broad okay. variety of clients. Okay. Hey, Sean and Rashawn, we got some more questions uh, coming in. I'm going to uh, pitch a couple of these uh, over to you. Um, mm -hmm. One from Suzanne, uh, she says, I have an existing Esri organization account, but the tools are limited on the GeoPortal when I sign in. For example, I can't see the map tool. Any recommendations? Um, if you're, it sounds like you have a public account um, that's there that's not allowing you in. My suggestion would be creating a Caribbean GeoPortal account so that we can allocate you the, uh, the credits and the permissions to get access to the maps, the analysis tools, et cetera. So that would be my suggestion to you. Yeah, and, and I, I guess I would also add to Suzanne, if that's not the issue, um, ping us again. Um, you know, we can also support, uh, you know, users with uh, troubleshooting on things. So. Um, great question, though. I, I've got another one here from William, uh, and I, I don't want to overlook this because he asked it a while back. He, uh, he said, are we in a, dis a position to discuss some of the limitations of the geo portal? Um, and uh, Sean, maybe I can toss that one to you. Sure. Um, well, the, the limitations within the geo portal. Uh, well, one of the first ones is you there by default, there are constrained uh, credits. So uh, when you create your user, you get 500 credits that's there. So if you're doing a large geocoding or a large analysis process, um, you're not going to be able to, you may not have enough credits to do something like that. So credits uh, for big things become, um, uh, may become a limiting factor. But, you know, get in contact with us if you're running into issues with that and we'll, we'll talk and have work with you. Yeah, that. that's great. I, I guess the comment I would make is, um, you know, it's, it's not meant for um, commercial use for a big organization like, I, I don't know, yeah. Shell Oil, for example, right? We would expect Shell not to be using this uh, unless they want to contribute data for the community. I think that's the, the biggest thing that I, I think of. Yeah. 
Yeah, the sharing, the sharing model, the intent of this is to be an open community in support of the region that's there. So it's not, it's not really designed to, to be a bucket to store your private data. The goal is to, uh, you know, empower uh, access, uh, improve skills, and uh, use the analytical tools and, and data to aid in problem solving. Yeah, exactly. And, and that it, you know, leads me to another question, this one coming from Brian about the data. So he asks, what data might be coming for countries of interest? And, and Brian's interests are Antigua and Barbuda and Barbados. And he wants to know, are there plans to have focus on other types of data, like cultural data, heritage data, archeology, span for example? Another great question. Um, within some of the other, within the Africa Geo Portal, there is the, the concept of country pages, where these are country focused uh, pages with curated access to that country's authoritative uh, data. Uh, what's coming down the, the, the pipe in regards to the data that's available? Linda, you might be able to answer that better than I. Yeah, but... and it, I'll, I'll do my best. And I think this is also a call out to all of you on the line and the community as a whole. So, you know, we're encouraging other authoritative data providers, whether that's commercial companies um, uh, or other government agencies to also um, you know, share their data uh, and make it available. Um, folks at um, places like NASA and NOAA have been very generous and, and we're federating that data into the portal. So, you know, we're starting to see a lot of, uh, you know, geographic information, uh, uh, you know, soils, weather and things like that. But, but to Brian's point, you know, the focus on cultural things, archeology, span Again, that has to come from some of those other authoritative producers and from you. So this is also where the university system's important, having those um, students that are studying in a certain area to be able to publish and share perhaps um, things that are unique to you know, a certain country in, in particular could be really powerful to this community. So I, I hope that helps answer that one. Um, we've got one more question coming from the group. I, before we before we close that one out. Yeah, um, Brian, um, if you if you know of any sources of data or anything like that, um, let us know. And if there's open data available on it, we can begin to to work with the data providers and start to curate it and bring it in. So, um, to Linda's point, if you, if there's info out there that you're aware of. Let us know. We'll we'll start to work with them to make it available around a wide variety of thematic bases, not just uh, just country and boundary data. Yeah, great. Um, from Carolina, a question: Can I control access or view on my own data in the Geo Portal? Yes, you can. Um, there are right now. Uh, I was looking at it at the before the start of of this. There are eight thousand items that are within the uh, the geo portal right now, but not all of them are public. There is the concept of uh, of making the the data private or it's working. It's your data in the end. So you can control who gets access to it. It does not have to be uh, a free for all where everybody can, can see your data or use your data. Great, um, I think uh, I'll throw it back over to you, Roshan, to ask some more of the questions you've got schooled up. Okay, yeah, no problem. Uh, I think the conversation is going pretty, pretty well. All right, so um, we answered the question about how, how large of a file. Um, can we download data from the GeoPortal? Great question. Yes, yep, we can. You can download the data if the, if the user or the data publisher uh, allows it. 
So this okay. kind of ties right back into that, uh, who can access and how, if the data provider will allow you, uh, allows it, that download capability is there and the data formats, again, are, are wide ranging. Okay, great. Um, another question, do common search engines find the items I've added to Caribbean Geoportal? Yeah, yeah, so uh, popular search engines are accessing public data that's automatically indexed. So if you go in and use, you know, the, the search engine of choice, Google or um, uh, DuckDuckGo or, or whatever, whatever your, uh, your choice is, it does index that information and can be discovered using common search methods. Um, so yes, that's there. If you're on one of the, the tools that Linda actually showed me that I wasn't, even, I wasn't aware of, and uh, in a conversation with Linda, she hit this magic little button, um, the little hour, or the, the magnifying glass on the top. That also provides a search into the geo portal. So it allows uh, access right from the landing page, the ability to search through all of the items that are, that are publicly available there. So there's a number of ways to search within the geo portal, but also through uh, popular search engines. Okay, great. Um, can users compose or classify maps on the portal? Yeah, so there's, there's a, uh, a concept of smart mapping. So smart mapping allows the user to classify data based upon certain values in fields. So um, if you are not, uh, you know, if you're not a good cartographer or when working with, cause I'm not a good cartographer, um, but working with uh, large data sets, it can help recommend breakpoints that's there to classify the data, color recommendations, et cetera. So users have full control. You can leverage what comes through smart mapping or you can go in and define your own classifications, colors, et cetera. All right. Um, can I share 3D geometry in feature, feature layers? Yes, yes. This is not just 2D capabilities. There are the ability to bring in 3D uh, geometries and uh, switch and toggle between 2D representations and 3D representations within the, within the maps in the geo portal, as well as leveraging some of the APIs that are out there. And I will also challenge that you can bring in a fourth dimension when working with the data within the data uh, here. You can bring time in. So there's the ability to work with time in 2 and 3D spaces as well. So you can work with a wide uh, array of data attributes and types to, uh, to, to answer your questions and use your geospatial tools, um, with whatever data is available. OK. I might want to stand up a country page. How does that work? Yeah, so this kind of goes back to, uh, I believe it was the question from Brian around, uh, you know, how do we do that? Well, set one up or for one of these uh, country agencies is reach out to someone on the geo portal team, reach out to Linda, reach out to Rashawn, reach out to myself, and we'll work with you to, to stand up a country page. Um, but we just want to make sure that, you know, we have a mutual understanding. Um, that we, you have the rights to share that authoritative data, as well as that data is going to be updated and maintained into the future. We don't want it to just become, you know, I, I, I jokingly stated the bucket that you put the data into. We want to make sure that that data stays current and is managed and maintained and is the authoritative source so people accessing it 
use um, use the most current info. So reach out to reach out to one of us, and we'll work with you to build out that that country page and that destination for you on the geo portal. All right. Does my subscription to the Caribbean geo portal time out? No, they renew every year. So awesome. Every year, you don't have to reapply. You don't have to worry about, oh, no, I'm coming up on a year. Do I have to pull all my data out of there? No. Um, they update annually. You get a refresh of your credits that are in there. Your data is accessible. Your apps are accessible. Your endpoints stay accessible. So, you know, once you create it, we'll keep working with you. Okay, great. That's, that's an important point for anyone who is concerned about that. Um, what tools does the portal provide? I know you've been through it a, a little bit, but, you know, remind folks. Sure. Yeah. So as we touched on, there's a bunch of analytical services and tools that are available. There's data hosting, so you can host your data that's there, geocoding, routing, uh, premium services, things like access to the radar, weather radar or traffic information or other premium services that are out there. Um, so Jupyter Notebooks, hosted notebooks are available now. Um, maybe not a technical tool, but um, I definitely see it as a tool in the toolbox is the training that's there. Um, you know, being able to to use these capabilities that are being made available, I think, is an important thing. So that's a that's another tool that's included. And then for the developers, um, those APIs. Um, the if you're working with in the web, or if you're working with open data science toolkits, um, you have access to connections and connectors to uh, work with the data provided here. So there's a wide range of tools available. That's great. Um, maybe before we go to the poll, uh, I've got a couple more questions from the audience. And um, one again from Brian, who asks, what about using my car? Uh, GeoPortal accounts uh, uh, collector to acquire data in the field. Are there limitations and caveats? And, and I'm gonna start to answer that by saying, Okay, be careful in your car, Brian. We don't want you driving and getting distracted. Um, but but on a serious note, it, you know there are laws in different uh, places that um, you know talk about what you can and cannot do. So we do need to be careful on that. Um, but uh, Sean, do you want to talk about using some of the field tools? Sure. So the Geo Portal does provide access to uh, to the field tools that will allow you to build the forms to collect the information, surveys, et cetera, um, that you can use in the use in the field. You can construct the data the way that, that you want in support of it. Um, so it's all of that is, is available through this. Um, yeah, the, the, the points that, uh, that Linda brought up, be careful there. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a lot of interesting workflows that I've seen where people are using either mobile devices, embedded devices, et cetera, with collector in vehicles to do field capture. And there's a wide range of, of field apps that are out there. So collector, there's survey one, two, three, or what used to be survey one, two, three, what used to be collector, uh, quick capture, et cetera. So those are all available to you in the geo portal. Okay, I've got one last question we'll take and then I think we're going to move on uh, from the Q&A uh, because we've got a, a couple of things yet to come which are really fun. One, our hands-on and of course Taiwo is uh, waiting in the wings to uh, share his experience. So the final question from Leonardo. Uh, Sean, this is for you. If I have information published in a QGIS server or Geo server, can I share it as a WFS or should I upload it as a shape file? Well, if you've already got the process in place to manage and to maintain that data in a WFS and publish it out and keep it current, you can publish it. You can just reference that WFS. Um, so when what the 
way that you would do that is you would go in and add an item and you would select add an item from the web. And from there, you can access a number of different OGC and uh, uh, service types. You can bring in a WMS, you can bring in a WMTS, you can bring in a WFS. You can also bring in a KML file if anybody has, has KML spatial info. And then you just enter the, the URL for that service, the title and some tagging to help it become discoverable. Um, and then it will add the item, referencing it back to your service. So we don't take a copy of it. We're referencing back to your WFS as the authoritative, uh, the authoritative source, so. Yep, yeah, that's great. Thank, thank you so much for that. Um, and again, if there are additional questions, put them in the chat. What we will do is collect all the questions that were asked um, and uh, create some additional uh, FAQs on those to share out to the group. Um, what I'd like to do now is maybe ask Kelly if we can uh, move on to a poll question. Yeah, thanks, Linda. So I believe we have two questions. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch the first one. So you should be seeing that up on your screen right now. Um, in this question, we want to know how would you like to, or what would you like to use the Caribbean GeoPortal for? And you can select multiple answers here. So you should be able to select as many um, that apply to you that you would like to answer with. And we'll just give that just a couple of moments here for everyone to get in their answers. And I, I see the answers flying in right now. So again, thank you for your participation. Um, and again, you can select more than one option there. So if you want to use it to make a map, or get access to specific types of data, do some analysis or share and collaborate or just to learn about GIS. And so far it looks like it's pretty even across the board. So I will leave it open for maybe about 10 more seconds. So make sure you get that, get your votes in. All right, and thank you. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and close this out and I will share the results again. All your individual answers are anonymous. Uh, but I will share the, the collective answers here. All right, so you should be seeing that now on your screen. So it looks like about 67% of you would like to use it to get access to a specific type of data, uh, followed closely by, let's see, sharing and collaboration and some analysis and making a map. So again, thank you so much for your participation. And we have one more question here for you. And I believe this is the last poll question of the day. So what would you like to use the Caribbean GeoPortal 4. Um, so again, you can select more than one answer here. So we have socioeconomic issues, environmental issues, example would be climate change, disasters, ocean and marine, tourism, education, raising awareness, policy, or, or something else. So select all that apply. And again, I see a lot of answers coming in here. So we, we appreciate your participation in this and, and hopefully this is fun for you guys as well. And again, thank you for all the questions that have been coming in. As Linda mentioned, we will be collecting all of these that we don't get to um, and providing additional resources for everyone. And this entire event is being recorded so you can review and share with your colleagues as often as needed. All right, yes. I'm gonna... oh, go ahead, Linda. No, it was great though, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, I see a, a good majority have voted. I'll leave it open for just a few more seconds in case we have any last minute answers here. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and end this and share the results. So it looks like a majority of you, 71% would like to use this for disasters, which good news, we have a webinar coming up in June that will talk specifically to that. So we will make sure to share that link with everyone uh, at the end so that you can sign up so you don't miss that event. And everything else looks about even across the board. We have environmental issues, I believe, coming in second. Yep, and then socioeconomic issues. So again, thank you so much for your participation. We appreciate that. And Linda, I will bring it back to you. Yeah, thanks. I'm actually going to throw it over to Sean right away. I think uh, now is the time we want to go hands on and we want to make sure, sure people are signing up. If you do already have a, an account in the geo portal, um, you know, you can take a break for two minutes and walk away and get some water or fresh coffee. But uh, Sean is going to walk us through how to sign up and then uh, quickly get us to uh, sign into this crowdsource map as well. So Sean, please. All right. So let me 
get back in here and uh, find which, there we go. So, as we had said a number of times, you know, how do you get started? What's the best way to get started? Well, creating that account is the best way to get started. So when you go to the GeoPortal, CaribbeanGeoPortal.com and scroll down, maybe a little bit after the, the second section, join the community now and start mapping today. There's a button. So when you click that button there, it provides the interface for you to create that GeoPortal account. And there's a couple of different ways that you can create your account. You can enter your information here. Let me grab the right one. So my name, last name, email, confirm it, accept the agreements that are here, and then click next. What it will do is it'll send you an email and uh, from there it will provide a link to ask you to uh, enter some additional information and then you're ready to go. So it's really a matter of just entering that information and, and um, getting started. The other way for doing that is leveraging one of your social accounts. So to do that, I would click on that same link and it would bring me to this page here. Now the social accounts that we allow for creating accounts are Facebook and Google. As I don't have a Facebook account, we'll walk through the steps associated with a Google account. So I would come down below, click that Google link, and then it'll uh, ask me to sign in with Google and choose the account. So I would choose the account that's here. If you are not logged in to uh, your Google account, it will prompt you through their authentication process, your username or phone number, and then the password, and then um, ask you to choose the account. Then when you say, when you choose the one of interest to you, it suggests a username for you, but you can choose something that would make it easier for you to remember. And again, selecting the uh, accepting the agreements and then click the create account. That's all that it takes to get in and create an account. I'm not going to do it here because I've got too many associated with my Gmail account already. Uh, I think I've got a Caribbean one already, but um, it's just a matter of a couple small steps, entering a little bit of information, and then you get uh, access to everything within the Caribbean Geo portal. That's awesome. So hopefully we've got some people signing up and signing in as Sean is walking us through. Um, and I already have an account, Sean. So uh, let's get that community map started. Yeah. Say that one again. You got to broke up a little on me. Sorry. I said, that, well, let's get that community map started as we've got people signing up and signing in. Excellent. So let me sign back in. We can bring up the survey. So we have um, one of, if this ties back to some of the, the questions that came up around the community aspect of it. Let's spell that correctly. We have created a survey to understand how people envision themselves participating in, in the community. Who's here, how you, uh, what your background is, um, sorry, typing and talking. That's okay, I put thing. the link in the chat for folks. Oh, you did? Well. Oh, great, okay. Yeah, so. Oh, even better. Yeah, because we want you to participate right now. Let's get hands on. Uh, I'm going there my darn self. Um, Everyone can go in and begin to fill that survey out and join the community. 
Let me just make sure this is. So this is a simple survey in survey one, two, three. You should be able to access the form and fill out your information. And, we'll, and what Sean will show us is as people begin to fill this out, uh, you know, what are the responses that we're getting coming in from the community? So um, there's a few different questions on there. Just a couple of them are required, your name and your title. Uh, beyond that, the rest of it is optional information. But of course, the more we can um, share, the more it helps others, right? So, you know, I'm working in uh, national government. I also have a keen interest in sustainable development and in agriculture and in business. Uh, so, you know, I'm going to check those boxes and, uh, uh, you know, fill out my information. Um, hoping again that you're all filling out your information along with us. And, um, you know, tell us uh, where you are, uh, if you're willing to share that as well. I'm sitting out here in, in uh, California. So again, I'm hoping that we're starting to see some folks uh, sharing that information. And then if you're willing to share, if you're willing to become a mentor, um, you know, to also share an email address if you're willing for people to reach out and contact you. So hopefully you are walking through and submitting your data. And again, um, this is live. So, you know, Sean's going to show us the app as people are beginning to, to log in. Um, I've just filled out my form and I'm hoping to see a lot more people uh, doing the same. So I'm not the only lonely red dot on the map. So hopefully you're filling out the form. We'll come back and show this dashboard again, maybe uh, near the end. Um, yep. What I might like to do now to keep us moving forward and please fill out the form, submit your info. Um, but I wanna invite Taiwo to come up and join us. We, we've talked a lot about the portal and what's possible, but it'd be really great to get uh, a case example of that. And Taiwo, did you wanna share a screen or did you want me to drive slides for you? Yeah, no, I'm going to share my screen, Linda. Perfect. Thank you, sir. I'm okay, thank you, you, Linda. Take Appreciate it away. It. Can you see my screen now? Okay. Thank you, everyone. Good day. My name is Taiwo, and I'm from Nigeria, based in Africa precisely. And I'm going to use this medium to share some of the things I've been able to do on the African Jew portal. As a GIS specialist and someone who is very keen about making impact within the community, I see the reason of how I can explore the African Jew portal to, to do creative, creative things that can impact the society. So then, as of then, those times, that was like a couple of, like, let's say last year, I had to, you know, stumble on the link to get started. And this Get Started link, it, it shows some of the key, key trainings that, you know, a first time I can learn from to understand how to create map, to configure pop-up. This is very, very good for a student or probably a young professional, actually. So I had to stumble on this to understand how the portal work. And one of my first map was the story map. And the motive behind the story map basically was to communicate that in the event of a disaster occurrence, what is the role of a citizen? So I had to develop this to, to bring out insight of what the citizen can do when there is disaster. Africa is a country, is a continent whereby you have several types of hazards, you know, coming from flooding, earthquakes, and Citizens sometimes don't know their role. So I use this to communicate their role. So part of the capability of the, of the Geo Portal is access to ArcGIS Story Map. So when you use the portal, I, I, will, I will employ everybody here to use the Caribbean Geo Portal excellently because it has this capability too. Additionally, during the time of COVID-19 at the early stage, you know, I also see the reason to see how I can make the COVID-19 you know, cases available to the, to the, to the public. And I was able to also leverage on the African Jew Porter platform to load in data and create a very, very lucrative dashboard. Even though I had to do this in collaboration with one of my friends. So we did it together. We use the portal and we always often update this data almost every time. We see this as very useful for the earth practitioners, for the government, and even the community themselves to understand the level of vulnerability. So it's country-wise actually, and it covers states in, within the country. So uh, during this period, places in Nigeria, you know, it's been mapped so you can see the country cases. 
in live at, at more in live one. Actually, you can always do so many things with the dashboard right now. Anyway, aside COVID nineteen, so I also employ everybody here to make use of the Caribbean Geo Portal to do some lucrative things like this that can impact the country. Coming down to what we're saying, after I've been able to, to understand more about the portal and do great stuff, it leads me to be to create a new flood sensibility map. And this is really, really live right now because you know Nigeria precisely is a country where you have consistent flood. And it becomes imperative that we should be able to make some early warning. And which I also know that the Caribbean also have some couple of hazards that, 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 that it's been occurring over the year. The portal can be leveraged to communicate early warning to the community, early warning to the emergency institutions to be able to understand where we'll be flooded. And if you look at this map, for instance, now you will see this is an interactive flood map trying to show the level of risk. So you can see the color here, green, light green and the light red, showing very high risks, meaning that this zone, they are more prone to risks. Another capability that it, it offered through this page is that you, the, the, the portal have, have access for you to plug into the OpenStreetMap. OpenStreetMap is an open source map where you can connect to where buildings can be extracted. So you can see now, for instance, now, these maps are showing several buildings. And let's imagine I'm, I'm, I'm within this particular locality, then I want to know to what level is my house or probably to what level is my street when it comes to flooding? That is, oh yeah, I saw a map which shows that, oh, definitely there will be flooding in the coming rainy season. Yeah, where do I belong? Do I belong to the high risk or do I belong to the low risk zone? So pretty much you can always go to the joke level to search. So for instance, now let's say it's for someone that's trying to search for the stadium, you know, stadium locality. In this case, you can see that it's forced within the high risk flood zone. So this is another, you know, another platform that can be used to, to communicate hazard, to, to minimize disaster, you know, impact on the community and on the people. So I, I see the portal to, to leverage on this. And uh, another creativity that I was able to use the portal to showcase is to develop a flood reporting tool. And what is the motive behind this is the fact that we have so many national governments, we have the national emergency, we have the state emergency, who can always respond to flood hazard within the country. Now, the, the, the gap now lies to the fact that how can people report flood? You know, how can they report flood? The survey one, two, three, two available on the Joe Porter also give us room to do this. And the link is being shared with the mass for them to report flood in a real time. And this can be visualized on the dashboard. This can be seen by the NEMA or the SEMA section, and it can equally respond to. If you, can, if you look at this survey, for instance, now you can always record the time of the flood, because you record your location. And the key power of GIS, which is the fact that it gives you room to, to tag the location, that is the where function. And here you go here also, that is, let's imagine that your locality there is flooding, you can capture flood, and equally, you can always take a picture. So we should know where is the flood, to, to what extent, what was imparted, what infrastructure. So I, I hope that I've been able to actually, even despite the fact that as a, I am more of a GIS to disaster person. So I really explore the platform majorly on how to approach disaster with GIS. And that's basically what I've been practicing in my profession. So actually, I've been able to leverage the portal morally on several type of hazard, down to meteorological hazard, medical hazard, sorry, yeah, medical hazard, for instance, and then the flood and the flood reporting too. So I, I want to, I, I would say that make the basis of the Caribbean geo portal. There are so much more looking down to what Sean was trying to showcase to us a couple of minutes ago on the NASA data assets. There are so many, many data sets that it can be used. So it's always very good. It contains a lot. So I, I want to say, except if you have any question, I'm going to hand my presentation here. Yeah, that's really great. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that, Taiwo. Um, we will throw it open uh, if there are a couple of quick questions for Taiwo right now. Um, so we'll, we'll pause for a moment. I'm going to take the screen share uh, back from you if I can, Taiwo. So I'll ask you to stop sharing so I can steal it back from you. Thank you so much. Um, and uh, while I'm waiting for questions to come in, um, perhaps uh, just to, to underscore um, what Taiwo was talking about, 
was, you know, we, we definitely see the use in the community and the Caribbean geo portal is new, right? It, it, it's not been around quite a, as long as the Africa geo portal. Um, Taiwo was uh, highlighting the, the work he's doing there in Nigeria, but we have many countries in the Africa region um, that have begun to stand up country pages. Um, you know, this is a, a template, it's a jump start to, to get you into the open data conversation to help you get started and, and to show the value um, to your organization. Uh, and it helps you also bring, you know, the national identity uh, to the user community. Um, you know, to begin to help people understand the value of sharing. Um, so I really hope that we're going to see more people um, doing the good work like Taiwo has highlighted here in the Caribbean region, right? We want people to come in into the community, find out information, carry on learning, keep up to date with the latest trends, you know, uh, reach that new audience, reach those youth mappers. Let's, let's get people into the conversation. Um, I am checking in the chat uh, right now and uh, not seeing any specific questions. So I, I know we're coming uh, down to uh, the end here, but we've got a couple of uh, minutes yet. And I wanna invite uh, my colleague Simone to come back up. And again, thank you Taiwo so much. I really appreciate you sharing um, your experience with us and the community. And um, perhaps if you would uh, be okay to share your email, with everyone in the chat. If someone has a specific question and wants to come back to you later, um, we'd be happy uh, for them to do that. Or, or we can just uh, direct questions back to you. So um, thanks again so much. And Simone, uh, welcome back. Uh, we, we've covered a lot of ground, yeah? Yes, we did. Thank you so much, Linda. Thank you so much. So we've come down to the end and what are some of the things we need to bear in mind? So we have been carrying on a journey from we commenced until now, a journey of how it is, what is the concept behind this portal, its importance, what is the intended use of the importance, how to use it. So we've gone through all of that. We've got a full demonstration on all of that to get us aware. So what are some takeaways? A, the fact that through the Carigio Steering Committee, this portal has been provided through the support of ESRI is responsorship and so the portal is available it is up and running and all it needs really is for persons us in the community to really log on create our accounts as we were guided through how to do that by sean so please create your accounts get on and start exploring there's quite a bit of resources there where sean and sean would have carried us through all the resources that are well a snapshot of the resources that are available on the platform so it's really for us to create our accounts if we haven't done so yet log on explore what is available there are trading opportunities as sean would have mentioned and how it is that really we want persons to really develop utilize hone in further expand on their capacity their geospatial capacity with respect to using the resources where the portal is concerned so please explore the training opportunities as are provided by Ezra on the platform please also join us where the other webinars are concerned that we'll be venturing in and what we really want is to create an open user community within the region and through this re and through this open community we really want persons to be providing data that can be accessed by other users. We want there to be a rich exchange of data that is pertinent to the region, given all the various issues and concerns that we share, given our interconnectedness and our location, geographic and geological location. So please do facilitate. It's an open platform. We are promoting the importance of an open community. We have quite a bit of um, information and ideas coming out of this. One important one is the fact that we have GIS Day on Wednesday, and this, given the given the rich exchange and discussions that have been facilitated here, we can really look at how it is that we can facilitate, whether it be local local um, competitions, GIS based competitions using the portal, or a Caribbean wide competition of which I'm sure Spatial Innovation Limited and any other extra distributors within the region should be able to provide us support with. So please do hone in in terms of what is available. So there was the importance and the stressing of creating a GeoNet community. 
yes, through user interaction. So let's really build on that. A lot is provided, let us utilize, and let us really advance our region, given the resources that are, are provided so that we can really become a more geo-empowered and geo-enabled community. So two other webinars coming up. By June 9th, we'll be looking at leveraging the geo, the Caribbean, Geo portal for disaster planning and management with the hurricane season. And we're aware of what's happening with our, with our friends and neighbors in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And we were carried through by Sean in terms of how, what is there, how we can load data, data that is provided, how we can utilize analysis tools to provide to facilitate us in terms of decision making where disasters are concerned. But apart from that comes August 26th, when we'll also be looking at another aspect of the Geo portal. So really, in order to be able to really utilize what's on the portal, we really need to be able to be providing accurate, reliable, current and complete data, various data, geospatial data that can really be utilized by our community to really drive the decision process. So we're coming to that in terms of looking at metadata, maintenance and best practices to facilitate wholesome data sharing on the portal for all our benefits. So we thank you. So at the end of the day, the next question is, how is it, as was asked before, how is it that you will be using the Caribbean Geo Portal? It has been made available through the efforts of UNGGM America through the Caribbean, Carib the Carib the Caribbean Steering Committee, and also through ESRI support. So how will you be using it is the key question at this, at this point. We're happy to see that so many persons would have shared that they are willing and want to start using it within the next three months. And then another set definitely want to be able to use it within the next year. So we're encouraging the use. We're encouraging the utility. We're encouraging you joining us on the other webinars so that you can further expand your knowledge and your expertise with regards to using this rich resource which has been provided for the Caribbean region and for all our countries. I thank you. Handing over to you, Linda. Yeah, no, thank you, Simone. And I, I'm just gonna ask if everybody wants to join us, camera's on, let's, let's get a group photo, right? This has been great and really appreciate everybody um, you know, hanging in with us. I'm gonna turn the screen share off so we can get everybody up on screen here, but you know, great questions coming from the group, from Brian, from Jason, from Elizabeth, so many um, people putting great questions in. Uh, we really, really appreciate the participation. Kelly, I'm gonna start snapping some photos. Did you have some housekeeping items uh, while we're snapping a few pictures here to, to take us out with and uh, keep turning those cameras on. I'm, I'm getting ready to start taking photos. Uh, go for it, Kelly. Yeah, thanks, Linda. So again, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us for all your great questions, for your participation in the poll questions. Uh, just as a reminder, we have been recording this entire event, so we will be posting that online for everyone to, to view and share at your convenience and share with your colleagues as needed. Um, I'm also going to put a link in the chat here for our next event, which will be on June 9th. And this is using the Caribbean Geoportal for disaster management and response. So if you want to go ahead and uh, make sure you, you check the chat, I have a link for the sign up there so you can make sure to um, register for the event so you can get that Zoom link. Um, and we, again, we'll be providing all of the resources you saw today along with that recording in an online post for, for everyone to look at and share. Yeah, great. And if you didn't get a chance to fill out the uh, survey, we'll put the live link onto the website. I see a lot of familiar faces, people waving. Hey, Wendy. Hey, David. Nice to see everybody. Hi, Paul. I uh, really appreciate it. And please join us for the next webinar. We hope you found this really useful. Um, hey, Laverne, she's doing good work with uh, mapping what's going on with map action. So um, really great, guys. Appreciate you all being here, and um, we'll see you soon on the next webinar, and uh, stay in touch, okay?